So I have a Admiral record player here. I don't know anything about it. It's in. It appears to be in really good shape, uh, cosmetically. I don't see any kind of label on it. It's got a broken handle. It's missing. I don't see any kind of label on it saying what it is. Inside's really nice. There, it says Admiral Model 329. 45 watts, 117 volts, 60 hertz, AC only. It says Model 1F1. Don't see anything about a year. So you can switch between 16, 33, 45, and 78 revolutions per minute. This is neat. The needle, it has two needles in it. It has one for 78 records and one for 33 to 45 records. And uh, let me show you as you rotate it, it actually switches out two different needles. So you can see one needle's down as I rotate it. Now the other needle's down. I thought that was kind of neat. Never seen that before. Maybe that's normal for these kinds of record players. So I did notice if I rock it back and forth. Definitely sounds like that obviously came down, but definitely sounds like there's some uh, broken glass or something inside. So maybe looking for some tubes. But uh, anyway, I guess we'll get this thing open and um, see what's inside. Alright, so I just took these screws off the front. See, we got speakers in there. There's a tube. So I'm going to take, uh, take these screws here out and see if we can get the turntable out. Okay, so I got those six screws around the edge off. This is Life tested for dependable service. So that's good. Okay, so let's see if this will come out. Yeah, not much to it. So there's the motor in the bottom of the turntable. So, yeah, turns freely. I actually tried to turn it earlier and it didn't. Maybe something was bound up. Not sure. But that all looks fine. I wonder if this comes off. Because I'm uh, definitely not going to put any 33s on there. Put that on there. It's got. I don't know, maybe take the screws out. I'm not sure. There's more of these things inside of it. And that's what was making the rattling noise. What's that? Like something's falling apart from somewhere. There's a cover plate for the amplifier. Somebody's been working on that, it looks like. Seeing a lot of these, which I think is strange considering it has this for 45s, because that's a 45 to 33 adapter, I guess. Kind of interesting there's so many of them in there when you don't seemingly need it. Alright, what do we have down here? It says 1F1. Don't see anything about a date. This tube's a 25L6. I think it says the same thing as, as this label. And a serial number. I 
Yeah, nothing really looks like a date. Okay, um, I think we need to pull the sample fire out. Let's see what we have for capacitor. If there's only a few, I might just replace them. I'm not exactly sure what what this is, but maybe that's what this stuff is. Maybe there was one over here too. Must be, maybe it's uh, some kind of rubber dampening. I'm not sure. There's another one over here. I mean, it kind of looks like a pulley. I don't really see where a belt's missing. There's one back here too. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. Okay, so, uh... Alright, let me, let me get this amplifier off the front so we can take a look at it. Okay, so the amplifier was held on by the by the nuts on the pot down here, but what's interesting is... If I can get them out... One of the pots has two of them. And the other one has none. So... Somebody's obviously taking it apart since the cover's off the amplifier, but it's interesting they put two of them on one pot and none on the other. But anyway, it's coming out. I think I'm going to have to unsolder this audio transformer from this speaker before we can get it out. Or maybe just remove the speaker. I'll check and see if I can get the speaker out. Those nuts look a little corroded, but if not, I'll unsolder the wires. All right, so the screws actually, those nuts actually came out okay. Covered in something yellow. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the coating from galvanized coating, or I don't know, is it uranium yellow? I don't know what's yellow. It seems like all the nuts in here are coated in that. Speaker, speaker looks good. Speaker looks real good. Nice. And underneath, if I can get it where y'all can see. Let me rearrange this for a minute before I break something. Okay, underneath. That looks good. That blue square thing has a picture of a diode on top of it. Uh, there's one capacitor right here. And just a few resistors. And then of course we have these capacitors on the front here. pretty good. Still might take the speaker off. Let's see what we can get apart here. That's nice how the colors match. It almost gets it apart. This, this two wires here are soldered in. cable. Okay, so I'll just desolder these two wires here and then we'll have the amplifier separate from the chassis. I'm going to go ahead and remove these wires from the speaker just because they're short and kind of fragile. I think we could just hook up some jumper leads while we're diagnosing it. Let's solder it back together when, we, hopefully when everything's working.
Okay, so everything's apart now. Let's take a closer look. It almost looks like there's a crack there, but it's... It looks like uh, maybe some of this glue was dripped across there. There's a hole right there. Other than that, this thing's in really great shape. It's like they painted it with some good epoxy or something. Some good paint to keep it from corroding. Here's our amplifier. A little audio transformer. There's our tube. Like I said before, that's a 25L6. And on the top it says 25L6GT. So this looks like it has three capacitors in it. So it's a 60 microfarad, a 30 microfarad, and a 20 microfarad. The 60 and the 30 are 150 volts, and the 20 is 25 volts. And uh, got this capacitor. Uh, I don't know what that is. Yellow is four. That might be purple, so that'd be seven. Orange is three, I think. Four, seven. 47,000 picofarads. So that'd be 0 0.047. I'll double check on that. And this, uh, this has a picture of a diode on it. An interesting looking diode. What is that? That's I'm not sure. It goes to this capacitor. Let's uh, put a meter on it and see if it gives us a diode like value. If not, I'll have to look up what that is. Right, so got the meter here set up as diode. I'm gonna block it. We get nothing that way. Nothing that way either. Let's see that's either not a diode or it's not working. Definitely looks like a diode symbol. Except for it's got an S for one one of the legs. Right, let's see if I can figure that out. Alright, so that's a selenium diode. I'm sure everybody knows that that works on older stuff, but uh, I guess I've never seen one before. Um, so, alright, so what we need to do, I'm probably going to ultimately replace that. Well, I'm definitely going to replace that. I want, I want to use this thing, so I want it to be reliable. I'll probably leave it in there because it's kind of neat looking. But I'll bypass it. Uh, need to replace that cap, those caps. These resistors need to measure them and see if they're how far out of tolerance they are. And then um and that'll probably be it. But before we do that, let's uh let's bring it up and see if it works. So uh should probably do some checks. So I, just quickly reading uh, it says you can't test the selenium diode with a modern meter just because it either has a high forward voltage or some kind of barrier voltage that has to, to break down or something. I didn't read that much on it, but let's at least uh, check some, some initial things. So here we've got the output from the audio transformer, so let's make sure that's not, um, not open. So I'm getting 0.7 ohms on the meter, so that's good. go to the primary of that transformer is this blue wire and this red wire here I got a uh, 183 ohms on the meter so that's probably good like I said I don't think we can actually measure selenium so that's a uh, 47.047 microfarad so let's see if we can measure that Obviously it's in circuit, so there could be something else contributing to it if it's off. So 
So that should be 47 nanofarads, and it's well up in 100, so it's definitely not ideal. It's not shorted, at least, at, you know, whatever voltage the meter's outputting. So we'll go with that for now. All right, try this resistor. Let's see, it's brown, green, brown. So green's five, I think, so that's 151. Or 150. Brown's the multiplier, 150. I got 152, so that one's that one's pretty good. Uh, orange, black, orange, so 303. Uh, 30K. From there, there, that looks open. And go into the right place. Three zero three. Yeah, that's that one's not good at all. It looks like. So what about this big one? That's four seven zero. So that's forty seven ohms. It's from there, to I think this bottom uh -huh. down here. That's 52.9. Okay, I had it on the wrong position, so let's go back and measure this other one. 52.9 from 47, that's not too bad. Okay, there we go. Uh, we have, looks like there's, this measures the capacitance, so it's not going to be very accurate, but what I say, three zero thirty k, and that's ten k, so that's nowhere near right. But maybe something else in the circuit's throwing it off, so I'd have to lift the leg to measure that accurately. So so far so good. This electrolytic. So what does it say? Red, yellow, blue. So the black must be common. So the black wire goes here. So what do we have? Red is supposed to be 60 microfarads. And red goes here. So get to capacitance. Fifty four, fifty five microfarads, that's not bad at all. It's pretty good. So uh yellow is thirty microfarads. That goes over here. And that's going down. So that's creeping down, looks like it's gonna end up around thirty five. It's probably okay for what we're doing. And blue it's 20 microfarads, which goes here. It's weird they take a while to read. I wonder if that, that means they're damaged inside. We'll obviously bring it up slow, uh, probably with a light bulb, and let them kind of repair themselves. Yeah, I'm not getting anything there in the right place. Yeah, that one might be completely open. Or shorted. 153 ohms. I don't know, is that what? That was 150 ohms. Yeah, we're just across that resistor. So maybe you can't re read it because of that resistor. Yeah, I think I was on the right, right spot. Okay, so we'll say probably good enough to go forward, or at least safe. To bring up on a dim bulb. So these two wires are the um, audio input from the needles. And uh, these wires just supply voltage to the motor, I believe. So we can disregard them. We got volume and tone up here. So I think what we'll do is 
power it up under a dim bulb, make sure nothing explodes. We'll leave it under a dim bulb because, I mean, obviously the uh, this capacitors could fail, especially that little fellow. But um, we'll do that and see if it see if it works at all. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. I actually just noticed it says bad across the top of this. I don't know if it means the audio transformer's bad or if something else is bad. Certainly the selenium di selenium diodes are known for failing. So hopefully our audio transformer's not bad. That would that would kind of be unfortunate. I don't know if I could find another one or something to replace it with or I might even would have to rebuild it or something. I'm not sure. So hopefully that's fine. But anyways, well uh Get set up for this tomorrow. Alright, so this is the next day. I'm rigged up here with a dim bulb. Um, I got a current wattage voltage meter here, but it's it's going to be uh, it's not actually going to work unless voltage gets all the way up. So that's that's really more to see if the the final wattage is correct. I don't have a current meter on here, um, if uh, except for that. So if, uh, if something seems wrong, I have to rig that up. But um, should be able to tell something from the light bulb. This is a 40 watt. I got the Variac. Uh, this is measuring B plus, which should, according to the schematic, be around 125 volts DC with the selenium diode. So I found a schematic on um, radiomuseum.org, and uh, there was some other information on there. I had this record player model on there, so it said that it was. Uh, uh, manufactured from 1958 to 1959, so that's the date on it. It's got a picture. It's definitely the same thing. So anyway, start with low voltage, power it up. I just want to see if we can get this thing up. I want to make sure the capacitors aren't just going to short on us. Um, probably just bring it up slow and let it sit for a while. We'll kind of see what it does. Alright, so it's on and we'll start turning it up. Alright, well we're up to 55 volts and we don't have anything. I think that I need to do something with those wires because there's a switch that cuts this on. So let me look at the schematic and figure that out real quick. Okay, so the white wire, if you connect uh, the white wire to the black motor, to the the white wire to the black wire powers the motor, so the red wire powers the amplifier, so it twisted the white wire to the red wire, so amplifier should be getting power now. So, voltage back down, start going up, and now we're seeing the voltage. It's kind of going up and then dipping. It's interesting. Looks like it's just kind of Charging through a capacitor, maybe. Bulb's not coming on. It's only 0.3 volts. Should be giving it about 60 right now. Yeah, let's cut this off for a minute. Let's measure the voltage across the diode. So there should be a DC voltage across the diode. Turn it up a little bit. Yeah, so the diode shouldn't have but a but a um but a maybe seven volts or so across it. It's interesting. We are reading a lot of DC, but it's kind of looking like the diode's not working. Okay, I was wrong about that. I think the uh, diode is working. Um, I can't just put the meter across the diode because it's AC. So you'll see the negative voltages. And Anyway, that, that's probably why it's got AC and DC on it. So that makes sense, I think. So I think I must have had it in the wrong place. I'm not exactly sure where I had it a minute ago. But I rechecked the schematic. And that should be the output of the selenium diode. And that should be the, the neutral line from power so see so yeah that's going up as expected so we're putting in 35 we're getting outside out 46 47 I don't know how accurate uh, the numbers on the Variac are 
it's definitely going up. The bulb's not coming on. Still going up, but real slow. I'm gonna let that sit for a little while and see if it if it uh, changes any. So it's been just a few minutes, and I was watching the voltage gauge, and it was at 58.70. It was kind of sitting around there for a while, and then it just all of a sudden jumped up to 59. So it's definitely something's definitely happening. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go watch some TV and let it sit for a while. I guess one um one point one note is that uh, the motor is not connected, the turntable is not connected, and the the um, filament to the tube goes in series with the motor. So the, tubes, the tube filament's not on. So we're just charging capacitors right now. It's basically the only thing. So we're going through the, the selenium diode and the resistors and the, and the capacitors. So this is basically just giving time for the capacitors to see if they're going to charge properly, make sure nothing's going to short. And uh, I'm going to hold it on 60 volts here for a while. And then uh, we'll come back and turn it up. Alright, so it's been a while longer. We're back down to 58.65. Maybe it's just fluctuations in voltage. I mean, that's less than a volt. So I think we're just going to go ahead and turn it on up. Uh, so here's the schematic. It's from radiomuseum.org. And I'm not exactly sure uh, what, what you're supposed to do with with copywriting or whatever on the website but I'll show it real quickly just to kind of show what we're doing so the power cord that'd be the neutral line and here's our selenium diode that's the point we're measuring right now so it says 125 volts is what it should be under normal operation with 117 coming in and you can see 2 to 7 is the filament on the tube and it's in series with the motor so right now the, the tube is not not uh, doesn't have the filament powered So let's bring it on up until B plus gets to 117 or uh, 125. Let's sit there for a minute. So our power meters come on. We have enough voltage. Let's see if it can tell us anything useful. It says we're at 98 volts on the input. So we're getting 125 on B plus with only 100 on the input. And the schematic saying it should be 117. Um, maybe the, uh, well, the tube's not on, so, so maybe that's why. The capacitors are only rated for 150, so I'm not going to turn it up anymore right now, but I'm going to let it sit right here for a little while and, uh, make sure it doesn't, doesn't do anything. I don't have any explosions in capacitors or anything like that, so I'll be back in just a minute. So since we can power the amplifier up, I, I think the next step's to kind of hook some things up. So I, I quickly turn the turntable over just to make sure the motor spins freely, and it does. But I noticed right here, there's some broken pieces, and that's what that stuff in the bottom of the box was. So that's the little rubber shocks. So the motor's sitting here loose. So we'll have to address that. But um, I think for right now it's fine. Probably won't just just won't turn the turntable. Okay, so everything's temporarily wired up. I've got the speaker hooked up. The switch on the record player, the on off switch is hooked up. So that should power the motor, even though it's probably not going to turn the turntable. But it will power the filament in the tube. So we can see how that works. We're still on dim bulb, 40 watt bulb. And um, if we get B plus up, we should be able to rub the needle and see if, if uh, we have anything there. So I guess um, I should put the meter back on B+, plus so we can look at that. So let me do that real quick. Okay, meters on B+, plus. I have kind of a lot going on here. But um, let's turn the Variac on, start turning the voltage up. So it is coming up there.
Where's 60? I don't hear the motor. The bulb's cutting on. I don't know if you can see that. It's lighting up dimly. We're at 11 watts, so it's definitely pulling more current than before. So I'd assume there's not an open in the motor or the filament. Let's see what our input voltage is. We're at 82. Yeah, I'm pretty much maxed out on the variac, so we're going to have to change to a higher wattage bulb. So that one was, I don't know what I said it was before, but that's 40 watts. I've got a, it's kind of hard to find bulbs now, but I've got a 60 watt bug bulb. Go back up with it. 30, 40, 50. Heard something. I don't know if that was moving or something just I just shook the table. The bulb's lighting up pretty good. We got some some light in the filament. Switch works. All right, we're at 24 watts, which is fine. I think. Uh, what's the box say? It says it pulls 45 watts. So. We got 96 volts going in. And we're at 90 volts on B plus, which is still a little low, but the Variax maxed out again. We've only got 100 volts going in. Can't tell if the motor's turning. Definitely not. So that's not working. I don't know if it just doesn't have enough voltage or or what. There's 60 watts on the. I'm thinking maybe the motor's not not working. Let me. Maybe we should uh. Here, let's let this voltage bleed down for a minute. And we'll lift it up and see if we can rotate it. It's definitely humming. Something's humming. Let me actually let me cut that on and see if that's the speaker. Alright, so the speaker's homing, so hopefully that means that this um, audio transformer's not bad. But I think there's a hum coming from that motor, too. Alright, so our B-plus drops out quick now that we've got stuff hooked up. That's good, because before that was taking a while. So I can kind of get this where we can look at it. Yeah, the motor spins, but it doesn't spin freely. I mean, I can I can turn it, but it maybe it's got some crud in it. I imagine it needs to be able to spin pretty easily. Just make sure I'm not shorting anything. 
Looks fine. Alright, let's go back up. Voltage. It is spinning. Look at that. All right, so we got 112. So the it was it was pulling the voltage down because it wasn't turning. So maybe that little bit I just did was enough to free it up. But it looks like it does work. Probably just needs to be lubricated. And we are getting our filaments are lighting up. It's definitely not as bright as it was now that the motor's turning. see what our input voltage is. We're at 97, 96 and that's maxed out on the Variac. Right there, so we get about 100 volts. So we're a little low on B plus with the light bulb but it looks like everything's functioning. We are getting some buzzing in the speaker which will hopefully go away whenever um, we replace the capacitors. So I'm going to flip it back over and uh, touch the needle and see if See if we get any volt, any noise to the speaker. Get it where you can see. All right, let's go back up. Hear the motor turning. Filaments warming up. Speaker starting to buzz. And we got no sound. Let's touch one of these wires with a screwdriver and see. Oh, that's a magnetic screwdriver. Yeah, no sound at all. So, maybe turn volume up. So, this is the volume right here. The speaker's making more noise. There's some noise in there. It's not very loud. Both needles are working. And that's very quiet, but it's definitely working. So that's a good start. Alright, good. I imagine it's supposed to be a lot louder than that, but we'll replace capacitors before we go too far with that. Okay, well, it looks like everything's working. Um, need to figure the... Looks like we're down to some mechanical issues, so we need to get that turntable to start working. So I think we'll set the amplifier to the side for now and see if we can, can do something with that. But uh, I, think we're, I think we're in good shape, at least. At least it's somewhat working. I don't know if the tube's any good. And, uh, but the output trans, the audio transformer. I'm assuming that means it's good. I mean, I guess it could be weak, have some shorter turns or something. But at least it's doing something. So, so anyways, oh, we're also low on voltage, so we can we can go up to full voltage. The uh, light bulb's almost off now. We can only get 110. Let me put the 150 watt bulb in there. See if we can get the full B plus.
All right, that's 125 volts. We still only have 102 going in. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Why? Our, uh, as the tube warms up, the voltage goes down. All right, so that's 115 going in. We're sitting at 108 on B plus, which is dropping. So that's a little low. Speaker's a little louder. Let's see if that comes up. Yeah, it looks like that's going to stay at 107. So that's 116 going in, which is the rated voltage. It's 117, so. Obviously, it'll be higher than that if I actually plug in the wall. It'll be like 120, so that'll bring that up more. But, but um, looks like it's mostly working. Um, capacitors are probably a little leaky. We'll obviously gonna replace those. But um, the speaker's buzzing. I got some audio. Here, I got maybe I get a um, get a record real quick, and we'll turn it by hand and see if we can hear a little bit of music. So I played with this adapter for the 45s a little bit, and it did um. It did come off, so now I could play records that don't have the big center. So I have some old 78s. Actually, uh, I thought it'd be good for this when we get it done because we don't have to worry about copyright stuff. But let me get one of those and, and put it on there. And just turn it by hand. Obviously, won't be able to. Probably wouldn't get a copyright strike doing it that way anyway. But let's see if we can hear something. Okay, so here's a record. It's crazy how thick these things are. First time I've ever held one. So this is Stardust by H O A G Y Ho Hoagie Carmichael. I don't know. How, I don't know what what date it is or anything. I'll have to look those up later. But, but let's see if we can get any sound out of this. It does not turn smoothly, so that's not a good start. All right, there we go. It was just sitting on something. Alright, so I've got the needle set for 78. So let's bring everything back up. Hear the motor turning. Might as well cut it on 78. Oh, look at that. I think everything just happens to be lined up right. It's probably not turning the right speed. Yeah, it's just barely. Anyway, it's turning. I'm waiting for the filaments to warm up. Starting to warm up. Our our B plus is dropping. I'm gonna turn up to try to chase it a little bit. Says we're drawing 20 watts. Alright, I can hear the speaker now. We're pretty much maxed out on the Variac. So let's see what we have. Sometimes I wonder. Alright, so I can't use the last clip because it turns out that song is not in the public domain so I found this one A Perfect Day by Elise Baker or Elsie Baker and this was released in 1913 so it's over 100 years old so it should be should be fair game to play hopefully YouTube won't have any issue with that so I'm gonna try this mechanism here see if it works cut the power on And you had it on. It's doing something. Well, it didn't start right at the beginning. I had to turn the table. Here. 
I had to turn the table manually so the motor's just not, not gripping very good with those, those little bushings working. That doesn't sound good. Well, it looks like the mechanism kind of works, so that's cool. Just having trouble with that that motor not not contacting the the turntable that well, but um yeah, so that's neat. Let's try it again. Yeah, see, it's not even turning it right now. I can hear it kind of changing speed. The motor is turning right now. Yes, I guess setting it on the table is actually what what pushes it up against it since those rubber bushings aren't there to hold it in place. This doesn't sound like it's making that that fluttering motion. Let's see what it what a record sounds like now. Yeah, that sounds good now. And that's volume all the way up. Tone does something. Okay, well I'm pleasantly surprised with how this is working. I was worried we were going to be rewinding a audio transformer after I saw bad written on it. But I guess they just meant the whole thing was bad, or maybe that says CY8. That's probably what it is. It says CY8. It probably doesn't even say bad. But anyways, um I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here. Uh, it's probably going to get kind of long, so I'll break it into probably just two parts. The next, we just really just need to clean this thing. It's in really good shape. I think it just needs to be cleaned up. Um, obviously, the motor's not mounted properly in here, so figure out a way to, to fix that. And then just recap the uh, amplifier, which I need to order capacitors for that. So um, I think that's all we really have to do. I think this has turned out to be pretty easy restoration. Oh yeah, there's no handle on the, um, on the case that's broke off. So we may figure something out for that. But um, anyways, uh, hope you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Um, see you next time, part two.